Colorado, the heart of the Rocky Mountains and a land of remote valleys and high mountains. This state is situated in the west of the North American continent and was given its name by the Spanish conquistadors. They named it after the colorful rocks to be found here, Colorado. Denver is the capital. It's located on a sunny, high plateau, 1,600 meters above sea level, on the edge of the Rocky Mountains. Here, the local inhabitants enjoy more sunshine throughout the year than in California's San Diego or even Honolulu. The TV series Denver Clan made this city of gold and oil world famous. A place of tall glass towers and elegant city villas. Skyscrapers between the prairie and the Rockies. A somewhat surreal city in which various power industry companies are to be found. A boom town situated in the mountains. In its center is a building of red sandstone, the Brown Palace Hotel. Since 1892, one of the USA's greatest hotels. Henry Brown opened it for the gold and silver kings, the beef barons, and the railroad tycoons. Colorado State Capitol, located on a hill in the center of the city, crowned by a 76 meter high golden cupola. No expense was spared for its furnishings. Generous staircases and precious wainscotings of Colorado onyx, a symbol of the riches gained from the local surroundings. The Senate has met in Denver since the 9th of September 1861, when they started by arguing about the construction and interior design of this splendid building. The Colorado Senate consists of 35 senators whose term of office lasts for four years. Henry Brown offered his land for the site of the Capitol building. Its construction took 22 years. Directly in front of the Capitol is the Civic Center Park, a large and well laid out area that contains several sculptures and a fountain. Laid out in classic style, in summer it's the pleasantly shady heart of Denver and surrounded by the state's administrative buildings. Numerous plaques are a reminder of Denver's former personalities. And a Greek amphitheatre is the setting of festive events right through the year. The 16th Street Mall is the city's pride, a splendid avenue that boasts the longest pedestrianised area in the USA, plus a free bus service. Here there are several shopping malls, restaurants and all kinds of shops with products from all over the world. A shopper's paradise. Trees, fountains and sculptures adorn the street, as well as horses and carriages. And there are lots of seating areas and street cafes. Larimer Square is one block west of the mall and the city's historic birthplace. A fine example of restoration. The 
the oldest street in Denver shines out in new splendor. With renovated red brick buildings that date back to the city's foundation. The History Museum features Denver's dramatic past. In 1858, gold was discovered at Cherry Creek and the gold rush began. Three gold prospector settlements made up what became Denver and the main city in Colorado. It had around 4,000 inhabitants. Denver became a boom town when the railroad came here in 1870. The Native American Indians were forced to make way for those arriving here by railroad and attracted by the possibility of a quick buck. This once small and peaceful town has since been transformed into a growing modern metropolis that at present has two million inhabitants. The proximity of both mountains and prairie is ideal for those who appreciate natural splendor. Colorado Springs was founded in 1870, near to a gold prospector's settlement. The small town on the eastern edge of the Rocky Mountains was an ideal place in which the wealthy inhabitants of New England and various visitors from abroad could relax. And it still is. There's also a major electronics industry here due to the various military camps that are based in the region. There are subterranean military control centers and also a space control center. The gold rush attracted great hordes of prospectors. By 1917, the town had expanded so much that it united with nearby Colorado City. Fountains in well-arranged parks and quiet streets. These are the memorable attributes of what is the second largest city in Colorado. The city's fine buildings make it easy to forget that we're now living in the third millennium as everything here seems to be from another time. It's like a living museum. The lovingly restored old town brings to mind the old Wild West, a time when the city's romantic history began. A former general of the Civil War and railroad tycoon William Jackson Palmer created a small tourist railroad alongside the Rockies. He also created the ground plan for the most attractive city in the West, a place of literature and science with first-class schools and colleges. With high-quality living quarters, featuring timber-built houses, splendid front gardens, and the patriotic American flag. In around 1871, there were 800 settlers and 150 buildings. Tourists came in their droves. The average altitude of the state of Colorado is 2,000 meters above sea level, and the snow-covered peaks of the Rocky Mountains rise to around 4,000 meters. The shining red rocks on the outskirts of Colorado Springs are a striking spectacle within the Garden of the Gods. A magnificent setting.
The huge red sandstone rock formations rise to a height of up to 150 meters. These natural monuments are a reminder of the geological past of this extraordinary region situated at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. The Garden of the Gods also features traces of man, as it was known to the Native American Indians many centuries ago. Protected by the rocky terrain, the Ute Indians found this to be an ideal place in which to spend the winter months. The tribe's winter camps existed here up until the late 19th century. The Ute not only used the Garden of the Gods as a winter camp, but also as a starting point for their journeys through the Ute Pass. The Ute Pass was originally used by vast herds of bison that traveled from the Great Plains to the mountain meadows of the Rocky Mountains. For centuries, the Ute Indians followed the bison herds on their journeys through the mountain pass that now bears the name of this Indian tribe. The surrounding landscape enchants due to its spectacular beauty. Small forests and meadows are in stark contrast to this world of natural stone. The rocks in the Garden of the Gods, silent witnesses of a unique geological development and a true wonder of nature. Close to Manitou Springs is one of this region's oldest attractions, a hidden world deep in the mountains, the Cave of the Winds. This cave system was discovered in 1881 by two boys while on a church outing. But the Jicarilla Apaches were here first. The old Indian tribe thought they could hear the voices of ghosts that lived in the caves. Indeed, the wind makes strange sounds close to the entrance of the cave. Later, another Indian tribe entered the cave system to shelter from storms and the region's numerous white settlers. However, they didn't venture far into the caves. A winding 750 meter stalactite covered cavern leads through 20 rooms, large illuminated areas. Until around 70 million years ago, a tepid and shallow sea covered this region of Colorado. As the shellfish perished, they sank to the bottom of the sea and created a sediment. Various strata combined and formed limestone. When the ocean withdrew, the limestone rock remained and formed part of the Rocky Mountains. The rocks were eroded by water. So numerous cave systems and subterranean lakes were formed in the depths below, and the hardest of the limestone created the largest caves. The caves filled with air, and natural minerals created magnificent stalactite and stalagmite formations, 
Directly next to the caves at the foot of Pike's Peak are the caves in which the Anasazi Indians once lived, the cliff dwellings. Here one can gain a fascinating insight into the culture of the native inhabitants of North America, how they lived, their culture and beliefs. The early ancestors of the Pueblo Indians settled here at around the time of the birth of Christ. This, the intersection of Colorado, Utah, Arizona and New Mexico. At first these prehistoric Indians had neither a permanent home or culture. They were hunter-gatherers. Later, they built primitive clay dwellings and cultivated corn and beans. Over time, the clay houses became bigger and bigger and subterranean kivas were built. Next, the Indians left the Mesa Plains and built their dwellings beneath cliffs and in caves and rock clefts within the walls of the canyon. In around 1300 BC, the Anasazi gradually began to abandon their cliff dwellings. And the reason for this remains a mystery. Indian ritual dancers are an age-old tradition. They honor Mother Earth, and various religious ceremonies are accompanied by music and dance. The rain dance is part of the ritual, and also one for a hunted animal to dance its soul back to the mountains in order to create new life. The dances vary from village to village, but both religion and universe are the same. The Indian Museum features Indian culture and work tools. It contains many exhibits, an impressive record of a long forgotten time and a people that almost became extinct. Numerous myths and legends preserve the pride of a people whose descendants now live in various reservations. At the end of the South Cheyenne Canyons, nature has created a fascinating miracle. The Seven Falls of the South Cheyenne Creek. Alongside the loud plunging water, 185 steep wooden steps lead up to Eagle's Nest. The masses of water have found their way to the canyon below in seven distinct areas. Each section has its own water basin. The water plunges at great speed across the granite rocks at the foot of Pikes Peak, the most visited mountain in North America, and the main landmark of the Rocky Mountains. Precarious steps and pathways lead from one waterfall to the next. It's hardly surprising that this fascinating natural spectacle was made accessible to tourists. In 1822, James Hull bought the canyon and waterfall for $1,300 and became one of the region's first conservationists. At night, the waterfalls are colourfully illuminated 
and within the rocks an elevator travels to the uppermost vantage point. It's extremely popular with sightseers. Halfway up Pike's Peak, a dam was built in the crystal clear water, of which it derived its name, Crystal Creek Reservoir. This romantic area is the starting point of the famous section of road that leads to the top of Pike's Peak. And each 4th of July, the highest car race in the world takes place. It is then that the breathtaking mountain scenery becomes the domain of courageous drivers who race their cars against the clock and treacherous mountain roads. The Race to the Clouds is the oldest car race in America and also the most famous. The Royal Gorge is, at almost 330 meters, one of the deepest canyons in Colorado and contains several wild and adventurous river valleys. Over millions of years, the Arkansas River has carved its way into the hard granite and created Arkansas's very own Grand Canyon. The spectacular link bridge across the canyon was built in 1929, and it's certainly not for the faint-hearted. The spectacular bridge is 384 meters long and 5 meters wide. It spans for 268 meters. Two thousand one hundred steel wires are contained in each link. The steel ropes alone weigh three hundred tons and the steel construction almost a thousand. This gigantic bridge construction was not cheap. It cost three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's the equivalent of fifteen million today. This, the highest link bridge in the world, was built in only six months, a lasting tribute to the brave men who created this masterpiece of bridge design. It's covered with 1,292 wooden planks, 250 of which have to be renewed each year. It's a truly awesome spectacle. The bridge can be crossed by foot or motor vehicle, but few cars cross it. Perhaps the car drivers are more cautious than the walkers. Today the canyon can be seen from various vantage points. A cable car travels alongside the bridge. It's the longest cable car in the world to have a single cable. Just a few meters closer to the hustle and bustle of the park, it's possible to enjoy the tranquil atmosphere of this unique landscape. Above the town of Almosa is another imposing natural spectacle, the Great Sand Dunes. Suddenly, and like a fantastic Fata Morgana, numerous up to 250 meter high sand dunes appear from within the almost treeless plains. For thousands of years, the strong winds of the San Juan Mountains have deposited an increasing amount of sand on the eastern edge of the San Luis Valley.
so nature has created a fascinating and constantly changing dune landscape. An impressive combination of both desert and high mountains. In this 16 kilometer long and 130 square kilometer region, there is little plant and animal life. Just a few grasses and rabbits. In the heat of summer, the sand can reach up to 60 degrees Celsius. Therefore, it's best to walk here in the early morning or the evening. In the purple light of the setting sun, there's a marvellous view of the shadowy dunes. The journey through southern Colorado is full of contrasting landscapes. We travel through small villages with eye-catching houses, surrounded by meadows in which cows and horses graze. The landscape around Salida is different to the hot south. A green oasis amid a world of cleft canyons, wild rivers and wonderful mountain scenery. When the Gunnison River was dammed, a long and beautiful lake landscape originated that has now become a leisure area administrated by the National Park Service. The Blue Mesa Lake is surrounded by volcanic rock formations and extends for 36 square kilometers. It is Colorado's largest lake. Boat trips, sailing, windsurfing, diving and fishing in magnificent surroundings. A whole range of activities to suit most requirements. Camping sites and trailer villages on the rocky banks of the lake at first appear to be rather unusual. But this entire landscape has the special charm of being unusual. And those who come here love it. With a length of 80 kilometers, the Black Canyon of the Gunnison is an amazing natural adventure. A dark abyss whose dark stone features the Earth's interior. The most spectacular 20 kilometers of this huge canyon has been designated as a national monument. Here, the canyon is almost 900 meters deep. Due to the high altitude, the fauna is sparse. Nevertheless, there are a few flowers and bushes. There are several paths and observation platforms, so visitors can enjoy the dramatic sight of the abyss. The rock walls are almost vertical and quite close together. In places, the riverbed is only 15 meters wide. These confines obscure the spring of the Gunnison River. This canyon has never been inhabited. It derived its name from Captain John Gunnison who first discovered the river.
The main attraction of this area is a natural landscape that lies close to Grand Junction, the incredible Colorado National Monument. One of the greatest landscapes in the American West. Strange sandstone formations, steep walls, cliffs and towers, and even more canyons. The unique scenery of the distant rock landscape is a captivating sight, and one that stimulates the imagination. wild area in which even the desert bighorn sometimes become lost and where huge golden eagles circle the depths of the canyons. The high plateau is part of the massive Colorado plateau that comprises various geological miracles such as the Grand Canyon, Bryce Canyon and Archer's Park. The spectacular journey along the edge of the canyon provides a constantly changing impression of the landscape that in turn is transformed by the sunlight. The forces of erosion, water, wind and cold temperatures work slowly, but after millions of years they've gradually created this natural masterpiece. John Otto adored the landscape here. He created numerous pathways as he wanted to preserve this natural wonder and make it accessible to visitors. In 1911, his dream became a reality. The air is filled with the aroma of sagebush, mountain mahogany, pine and cactus. A fascinating blend. The mighty rocks of the Mesa Verde National Park appear in all their majestic glory. Unlike most of the other nature parks in the USA, here it is not only the natural landscape that is protected, but also the remains of an early Native American Indian culture. The splendor of the Mesa Verde or Green Table is well described by its name. The seemingly endless landscape reveals a broad and idyllic plain. Park Point is the highest vantage point, 2,613 meters above sea level. Despite the rocks, the terrain of the Mesa Verde is quite fertile and for several centuries the climate has been good to the Anasazi Indians. The harmonious relationship between the early inhabitants of these canyons and nature can still be relived at these marvellous and fascinating sites. The climb to Balcony House has always been an arduous task. Within the entire area of the Mesa Verde, no other Indian Pueblo settlement has been protected more than this. The unique quality of the brickwork indicates the past presence of a highly developed community that probably lived here until the end of the 13th century.
It is also likely that poor harvests due to a long period of drought forced the Indians to move from their precariously located dwellings. For several centuries, the 45 rooms of Balcony House were completely empty. The families of the Anasazi left without a trace. These buildings have managed to survive due to the dry climate, the inaccessibility of their location and the nature of the building material used in their construction. From the 11th century, new building techniques were developed and this gave rise to good walls built with smooth bricks. The newly developed brickwork meant that all the Indian dwellings, with one exception, were situated above ground level and contained several floors. Yet not only architecturally, but also socially, an important change took place between the 8th and 12th centuries. It is thought that the kivas that were discovered several meters below the ground were important religious and ceremonial meeting places for various settlements. However little is known of the true significance of these buildings, the unknown increases the allure of these early Indian settlements. In spite of the secure location of these dwellings, life in this rugged terrain must have been extremely demanding. Some dwellings that were built into the cliffs by the Anasazi Indians have given this place the name of Cliff Palace. The dwellings were discovered in 1888 by cowboys who must have been amazed when they stumbled across these ancient and magnificent structures. During the 6th century, the Anasazi began to settle on the Mesa Verde Plateau, Spanish for Green Table, where they lived in caves and simple wooden shelters. They began by building their dwellings from loam bricks until, in the latter part of the 12th century, they moved into these cliff dwellings. It's not known why the Anasazi settled here. The technical building abilities of the Anasazi Indians, although simple, were nevertheless remarkable. Although the buildings were constructed with sun-dried loam bricks and extremely primitive tools, they were able to build multi-storey buildings and small towers. The cliff dwellings are located beneath the Mesa Verde Plateau in a dried out hollow of Cliff Canyon. Due to the location of the settlement, its former inhabitants had to be excellent climbers. This amazing cliff dwelling comprises more than 200 living and storage rooms, as well as 23 that were used for ritual ceremonies. It's the largest of its kind. The naturally sheltered village once accommodated up to 300. Travelling to numerous cliff dwellings of the Mesa Verde is only recommended for those who are not afraid of heights. Nearly 800 years have passed since the sudden and inexplicable abandonment of this area by the Anasazi. 
Thankfully, their fascinating Cliff Palace dwellings in the Mesa Verde National Park have managed to survive the centuries. The contrast of the nearby mountains that are often covered with snow until late spring with the red walls of the Colorado Plateau is quite remarkable. Deserts, canyons and Indian pueblos. Contrasting with mountain valleys covered with spring flowers. Surrounded by green forested mountain slopes and snow-covered peaks is the roaring winter resort of Aspen that is situated in the valley of the Roaring Fork River. This once important mining town has since been transformed into a popular holiday destination that, in addition to being a summer resort, is well known for its exclusive winter sports facilities. In summer, all is calm and tranquil, but each winter Aspen becomes a meeting place of the rich and famous from the show business, commercial and sporting worlds. This expensive tourist resort originated around a hundred years ago as a camp for silver prospectors and for some years was the most prosperous silver town in America. In 1893, the price of silver fell and the town went into decline until 1936, when wealthy tourists discovered the area. The region's rugged pioneers have now been replaced by stylish holidaymakers, and a journey by shining horse and carriage is more popular than by taxi. The price of accommodation here is extremely high, but a visit to Aspen and its pretty Victorian buildings is a must. There are also a number of monuments that commemorate the courageous people who first settled in the area. A cable car travels to the vantage point at the top of the 3,418 meter high Aspen Mountain where sightseers are rewarded by wonderful mountain scenery. The surroundings of Aspen are quite magical. Lush mountain pastures with colorful flowers and in the background the striking Colorado Mountains. The scenery makes it easy to understand why it's so popular with the American jet set, a veritable paradise on earth. The road travels higher into the fascinating mountain landscape and to Independence Pass. Three thousand six hundred and eighty six meters above sea level, and Mount Elbert, which at four thousand three hundred and ninety nine meters is the highest mountain in the state of Colorado. The route of the white settlers once led across Independence Pass and took them into the Golden West. Colorado is the state of the Rocky Mountains, a huge mountain range that is the backbone and water divide of the American continent. It extends from Canada almost as far as Mexico. The mountain peaks are 4,000 meters above sea level, and it was the glaciers of the Ice Age that created this overwhelming mountain landscape.
Compared to the European Alps, these mountains are situated further south, almost adjacent to Spain, and that's why they're covered with trees at high altitude. Above the forests are mountain meadows with splendid flora and also barren rock. Here the air is very thin. We're now on the Trail Ridge Road, a mountain road that is 3,500 meters above sea level and that travels through the Rocky Mountain National Park. From Estes Park, we arrive at the main entrance to the park, and from here a side road leads to Bear Lake, an idyllic mountain lake. Bear Lake Road terminates here. As this is a protected area from here, it's only possible to travel by foot or on horseback. Two-thirds of the park is located within the forested area. Tree-covered slopes and valleys provide an ideal habitat for many rare animals. The Rocky Mountains separate the North American continent into two climatically different regions. The humid east and the arid west. Most of the rainfall occurs in wintertime as snow. These mountains originated during the continental drift around 135 million years ago. Layers of stone became liquefied and were compressed into various strata. Erosion removed the upper layers and steep clefts were formed. Waterfalls such as the Alberta Fall indicate the power of nature that created this imposing landscape. The Rockies formed during the Ice Age that began around half a million years ago, when the riverbeds filled with mighty glaciers. They created deep U-shaped valleys with smooth slopes and mountain peaks, and various lakes. Sprague Lake is one of the region's many glacial lakes. It's ideal for walkers as well as anglers and boat enthusiasts. Several ranches offer accommodation. Above the wooded areas is the barren high mountain tundra with its primeval appearance. In 1859, Joel Estes and his son Milton explored for the first time this fascinating mountain world. They were overwhelmed by its natural beauty and huge glacial rivers. A year later, they returned with their entire family and settled here. In around 1909, Enos Mills and some colleagues began to conserve the area. In 1915, it became America's 10th national park, with fine roads, pathways and horse trails. Earlier, gold prospectors searched for precious metals and created small settlements. Stories of the gold prospectors became legendary, as indeed did their finds. But the spectacular gold rush in the Rocky Mountains came to an end as suddenly as it had begun. 
ghost towns, gold mines, ancient cultures and mountain paradises, native Indians, explorers, fur traders and gold prospectors. All the ingredients of the colorful history of America's Wild West. Colorado, a place of spectacular nature and breathtaking adventure. <laughs>